three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you're all having a great weekend so far, or a start to your week if you're uh, listening to this a little later. Got a review here for the latest Angelina Jolie film, Those Who Wish Me Dead, which is directed by uh, Taylor Sheridan, which is uh, adapted from a book. And it's a screenplay written by Michael Cory uh, Cory uh, Cory uh, Cory I'll go Cory And of course, this uh, the stars Angelina Jolie. So here's the thing: it's really weird because I was looking as I was looking into the film. So uh, Taylor uh, Sheridan, who was the writer on this or the uh, director, pardon me. He actually wrote Without Remorse, uh, the Tom Clancy film with Michael B. Jordan that just came out. And a lot of the things about that film translate here. This is just kind of a, I don't want to say a boring movie, but it's very paint by numbers. So the film starts off with uh, this kid who's played by Finn Little, who uh, is about to turn uh, 15. So good for you, kid. Uh, Happy early birthday. But he witnesses his dad get killed in front of him by these two, uh, these two hitmen. One that is played by uh, Aiden, uh, Aiden Gillen. You know him as a little finger on Game of Thrones, and then Nicholas Holt, who of course you know from Mad Max Fury Road, uh, Days of Future Past. You know the, those X Men films, uh, Warm Bodies, a very underrated movie, by the way. But so the kid is on the run from the two of them. And Angelina Jolie basically goes ahead and ends up becoming his, you know, pseudo protector as the walls uh, close in because there's a fire that they go ahead and start to go and smoke the kid out, uh, literally and figuratively. So here's the thing. Angelina Jolie, one thing we have to bring up, she really hasn't been acting. She really has outside of, the, you know, doing a, Male- a Maleficent movie every couple of years. She really hasn't been doing anything outside of that and then uh, some voice work here and there. So I was actually really happy to see that she was returning to being in front of the camera. Of course, we have uh, Eternals coming up where she plays uh, Athena, which I'm really excited to see her in a Marvel film because, oh my God, it's Angel and Jolie. But the thing about this movie is that this is very much one of those TNT Sunday afternoon movies you'd watch hungover and go, oh, that wasn't bad. It's one of those. And, you know, for better or for worse, I never felt, even with this paint by numbers as this film could be, I never felt like I was wasting my time. There was always enough for me to go, oh, okay. Uh, Angela Jolie herself, again, as I mentioned, that's just great to see in front of the camera. She develops chemistry with this kid really quickly. And that was probably the biggest surprise that I had. Uh, she plays Hannah. And Hannah and Connor, they they really do get along in that way that you kind of need to give shit kids shit because kids can be terrible. <laughs> There's this point where when she initially uh, meets him, of course, he's fucking scared. He just watched you know, his dad get killed in front of him. And, you know, there's a point where he even kind of, like, trips him and, you know, kind of lets him know, lets him know, like, look, I'm the only person who's going to be able to help you. You kind of need to shut up and follow me here. And I appreciate the way that they actually met. I thought it was weirdly endearing. And that that relationship in particular is the heart of the film. So when you see that played out well, it does make you go, oh, OK, this is this is pretty cool. But. Hannah's a smoke jumper who's going through a tragedy or is still dealing with a tragedy that happened under her watch. And that is something I'll say, too, that when the film lays out what happened, uh, she's a smoke jumper. And this was I I don't know if this was actually filmed in Montana. It's supposed to take place in Montana. Uh, 
as someone who has his family living there or parts of his family living in Montana, I love the way that this was shot. It does a really good job of capturing the scope, I believe, of a small town of, you know, the countryside. I I really actually appreciate the way that that was done. There's a shot of Angelina Jolie, and you'll know when you see it, but she's sitting in this watchtower, and she's looking out, kind of like cross, like legs crossed, and you get this over-the-shoulder shot of her. And you just see, you know, like the smoke starting to roll in. It's an absolutely beautiful shot. And there's some there's some decent cinematography in this movie that I went, okay, I actually, I, I, I don't mind this. But the thing is, again, this is paint by numbers. The one real scene that Angela and Julie gets as far as action, and it's 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 peculiar to me because when you think about the fact that Salt was, you know, 10 years ago, I was really excited to see her get back into the action genre. This felt like a film that was very much tailor-made for her. And yet, unfortunately, she doesn't get to do nearly as much action as I believe she should be able to do. I, I, I feel like I've been saying this more often than not, but I really think this movie, you know, yeah, this is based on a book. You probably could have done a miniseries out of this. I think this movie need to be just a little bit longer than two hours, like two hours and five minutes, because the thing about Hannah is that they really give you just the floor as far as who she is as a person. She does this incredibly just intensely dumb thing at the beginning of the movie that I just went, well, that was stupid, but it's a callback to something that happened to her uh, earlier on. And while I appreciate that action, that stunt, It's really one of the few action beats that Jolie gets here. And I just think that's a waste. You know, would you get Dave Bautista not having kicked someone's ass? I mean, it just doesn't. It didn't make sense to me why they made that decision. Now, with that said, with the film's climax, she really gets to show that, hey, I could still be Laura Croft if I wanted to, which I'll be honest uh, I, I love Alicia Vikander, but I'd rather have Julie still as Croft personally. But I, I did appreciate that. And there are some, the way that uh, Connor's dad is killed is incredibly brutal. That was actually a scene that took me and caught me off guard in a way that I went, oh, that's actually pretty awesome. Well played, movie. The guys that, uh, that Nicholas Holtz, Patrick, and Jack, uh, who's played by, as I mentioned, uh, Aiden Gillen, the guy that they end up working for. And that's the other thing. The villains, they have this throwaway, uh, this throwaway line where they go, oh, they're brothers, which, you know, they don't really need to be brothers. And it, that's that's material right there that really could have been fleshed out. Because, again, they just say, oh, we're brothers. And they kind of just throw that line away. But there's really no digging to how they got into this business as far as b- becoming hitmen like did they have some tragedy that you know led them down this path like you don't know anything about them except for they're here to kill the kid and they work for the biggest son of a bitch in this movie they work for tyler fucking perry who plays arthur in this throwaway cameo and i wish <laughs> i wish there was someone watching the movie with me because the look on my face when tyler perry showed up i just went son of a bitch of course of course you're working for tyler perry and while these two guys are pieces of shit i will give this way nothing happens to tyler perry and that that might be the biggest tragedy <laughs> of this whole fucking film I, I don't know how many books are in this i don't know if this is a series of books maybe he's you know the big bad down the road or something but just having tyler perry in this movie as a throwaway i went well that's fucking upsetting one thing i did love about this movie it it loves a little strong but something i really liked is john bernthal's in this and he plays ethan who used to date hannah so they have a little history again i think it's almost again kind of a throwaway line i wish there would have been a little more digging into you know how that ended and kind of where they stand now they kind of hint at things but it would have been nice for them to explore that a little more but ethan he i really like his character here he is expecting a uh, his first kid in the movie and uh and he's uh his wife is played by medina Signor. she goes ahead and she plays uh, allison 
and she's pregnant and their relationship while you don't get a lot of time with them together i you feel and again it's probably more their chemistry it's definitely more their chemistry in the script but the way that they vibe off each other and the way that this kid is clearly their focus but they're incredible badasses though there's a scene that allison has with the two uh, with the two assassins that i went Son of a bitch, that was fucking impressive. And that was something that I went, you have a woman here in your story who's six months pregnant and she's getting more action scenes than your main character. That's a fucking problem. And that's a huge thing uh, that I have to give this film because, again, all due respect to uh, to Medina, but we've seen Angelina Jolie, you know, be an action star, not just off salt, but, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith and both Tomb Raider films. Jolie has shown she can handle action, be great at it. And it just felt, like a very big missed opportunity to go eh we're good uh i wish i had more to really say about the movie but to be honest this is just pretty simple it's pretty cut and dry i enjoyed the climax um the the one thing okay so the biggest complaint i will give this movie is that there's a point <laughs> the the fire the, f- the actual fire itself the CG is so fucking bad on the fires. I just went, uh, I really, you know, I, I know they probably didn't want to build sets and stuff for this, but my God, th- this was just one of those cases I went, you guys needed to put some more money into the CG for this. And th- th- there's a lightning storm in, 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 the, in the movie that like shocks Hannah that I went, all right, really? So she's going to, uh, she's going to become Thor. Apparently it, it there are just those sort of things that took me out of the movie for a second when they would do it. I just went, eh, okay. As I mentioned, I did appreciate the way they explained why Hannah is so freaked out by fire and how this trauma of this event really has stuck with her. With her. And the way that things, the, the aftermath of that whole event, when they kind of get into it, again, they only touch the surface, but when they get into that, it is one of those, oh, wow, you got royally screwed over. So it does make you go, okay, she needs, ironically enough, needs this horrible situation. This will be her healing. And again, I really enjoyed the chemistry between uh, Jolie's Hannah and uh, Finn Little's Connor. That goes a long way for me. There's this point, and you saw it in the trailer, where, you know, he tells her that, you know, my dad said to give this flash drive to someone that I can trust. Are you someone I can trust? And that whole scene, the way it plays out, I went, wow, I really, really appreciated kind of the intensity that, you know, that both of them bring to the film uh, in that scene. So this movie isn't devoid of some good performances and some actual good stuff that occurs. There is a quick draw moment in this movie that I went, oh, son of a bitch, I love that. I won't spoil any more than that. But yeah, this is just, this is okay. It's not something I would tell people like, oh, you need to run out and, you know, go see this in the theater. But it's something that watch it at home on hbo max and went you know this wasn't a bad way to waste uh to spend you know an hour 40 minutes and again it's under two hours so this is almost one of those blinking oh it's over shit all right so yeah i'd give this uh uh i'd give this a c plus yeah i think a c plus is fair for this it's one of those things like i said i had a lazy day yesterday and i sat up with my cat and watched it and we just went eh, all right uh he enjoyed the fire so if that <laughs> it counts for anything i digress those who wish me dead have you guys seen it what'd you think of it let us know in the comments you can follow yours truly on the twitter at j hunter real pineapple you can follow scott on twitter at nearman the first don't forget to like share and subscribe you can find us most places you listen to podcasts uh, soundcloud apple and google podcasts podbean stitcher iheart radio spotify amazon music tune up uh, to name a few spots at the real pineapple and don't forget to like our pages on facebook you can like our gaming page at real pineapple games that's r-e-e-l obviously and you can go ahead and like a, our main page the real pineapple thank you so much everyone for listening and for all your support and love we appreciate it we'll have reviews coming up here soon for corella as well as for um uh, Gonna have a breakdown of that Venom uh, Let There Be Carnage trailer. I have some thoughts on that. And uh, I'll have some reviews for uh, the Best Picture nominees. So I'll have that review up for uh, 
Judas and the Black Messiah soon, as well as the Father, and along with some other stuff coming down the pipeline, including Bojack Season 1 and 2, and uh, 3 and 4 reviews, and 5 and 6 reviews uh, with uh, my friend Kayla, so we're working on those, but everyone, thank you so much for listening, take care of each other, go get your COVID shot, wear your mask, and we'll talk to you soon.